Good morning, Sava here from Football Heritage TV. The last day of my holiday. I fly back tomorrow. Hopefully that is not a signal that Spurs will stop being as proactive in the market. Hope you're well. First of all, massive thank you for all the likes and subscribes that we've had over the last two days. It's been absolutely mental. I hope everyone is well and I hope you're enjoying your Friday, whether you're working, whether you're sunning yourself, whether you're getting ready for a big night out tonight. Whatever you're doing, happy Friday to you. Today, I am gonna talk about the following. Alex Scott of Bristol City. Eric Dyer has said he wants to stay. Christian Romero is being linked with Juventus. What does that mean? Possibly Bremer the other way. We'll look into that. And Hoiberg as well to Atletico Madrid. So there's a lot of fun and games and rumours going on at the moment in the world of football. Where do we start? Let's start with Alex Scott. Again, another conversation I was having the other day with Henry from Henry Wright TV, with Sean from Spurs Talk Show, is even with the forwards we've got in play at the moment, we're very light up front. You have got Kane, Son and Kulisewski and Richarlison. If two of those were to get injured, where do we go for our attacking outlets? Now, you've got Brian Hill, who we don't know. Will Postacoglu like him? Has he got the work rate for Postacoglu? You'd probably say yes. Is he a Postacoglu type player? We don't know. We don't know yet whether he might like his industriousness. Will he get him in? Is he too lightweight? All of these different questions that people will have had for years about Brian Hill, we're about to find out. Europa League winning Brian Hill, by the way. Um, so that leads to Alex Scott. Now, Alex Scott, more than being one of the wide forwards, is predominantly a number 10, more of a playmaker, more of an attacking midfield type player. But very much like, likened to by a lot of pros, by a lot of experts down there in the championship, likening, likening him to a young Madison, a young Grealish. Now, I've seen Alex Scott play a number of times, and this boy is special. He has got a lot of talent. He is very, very good technically, a great pass on him, good vision. He's strong. This is a very good footballer. And to boot, he supports Tottenham Hotspur. Now, the going rate is between 20 and 25 million. And the reports coming out yesterday from people like Ben Jacobs were that Tottenham were one of the favourites to sign him along with Wolves. For me, a no-brainer. You can't just have an 11. You've got to start having players in the background. And for me, if Madison was to get injured, if he was suspended, if he was having a bad game, you're going to need a player that can come in and continue playing that formation. A like for like, because at the moment, the only other one I can think of is Alfie Devine, who's a kid. So for me, Alex Scott is a no-brainer. Have you seen him play? Are people going to turn their noses up at him because he's from the championship? Or are they going to realise some of the other top players we signed from the championship? Carl Walker. Danny Rose, Tommy Huddleston, Michael Dawson, Andy Reid, Jermaine Defoe came from the championship. So lots of players we've signed that came from the championship that have done very, very well. Deli Ali came from League One and had a great three years. So moving on from Alex Scott, let me know what you think. Moving on, Eric Dyer. Now I know this will upset a lot of people. Eric Dyer has come out in the last couple of days and said, I am going to fight for my place in this Spurs team. I am going to show Postacoglu that I should be in his team. And thousands upon thousands of Spurs fans are going, no, not Dyer again. He can't stay. Now, where are we at with Eric Dyer? He's been at the club for a long, long time. He's had indifferent spells. When he first burst onto the scene, he looked a very good um, a defensive midfielder. He could play right back. As he's grown and got older a bit, he doesn't seem to have progressed. Now, the question with this is, A, who would want to sign him? Is there going to be the appetite to, uh, to buy Eric Dyer? Secondly, we've got to look at this pragmatically. Now, I don't rate Eric Dyer at all. I do not rate him. Before anyone in this video comes back and goes on, Sava wants to keep Dyer. Sava does not want to keep Dyer in any way, shape or form. But Sava, I'm going to stop talking about myself in the third person, is also very, very aware that we have a lot of centre-backs that need to go. And the chances that they all go in one window? Really? Do we all believe that Tanganga, Roden, Sanchez, Dyer, Davis, plus Longley who's already gone, are all going to go in one window? And we're going to bring in three or four centre-backs in one window? 
I don't think it's going to happen. Because of that, I think Eric Dyer survives. What I'll be really frustrated at, and by the way, I think he survives for another year. What I'll be really frustrated at, and I'm sure most of you will be out there, will be if he starts. I have no problem if Eric Dyer is a substitute centre-back that comes on every now and then if we need to. What will be frustrating, though, is if we get one injury, let's say we've got two centre-halves above him, we get one injury for six months, and then he is our main guy. Let me know your thoughts, Eric Dyer. Can we get any money for him? Can you force a player out that doesn't want to be here? Lots of, lots of different conundrums there. Will Postacoglu like him? I don't think he will. He tends to like players that can bring the ball out, players that are very comfortable. I'm not sure. But one thing is for certain, we will find out. The next player, again, this player, I'll talk about this with an open mind. Christian Romero. There were reports a couple of days ago from a number of reporters saying that Christian Romero was wanted by Juventus. Now, this is certainly a very interesting one because you've got some of our fan base that think this guy walks on water and is the second coming of Maldini. You've got other fans, and I'm in this bracket, where I don't see the fuss. I think he's okay. I think he's a good defender on his day. But for me, there are too many days where he's not having his day. You've got people who think, well, hang on, no, just stick him alongside a top centre half and you'll see that he is brilliant. And the truth is, it's probably somewhere in the middle of those two. Not the Maldini one, but probably somewhere in the middle. But for me, I've always felt that I don't feel that he's massively committed. I feel that he's, he tends to feign injuries a lot as it's coming up to being, uh, being uh, time to go and play for his international team for Argentina. Could be being a bit harsh here. But I get the feeling that the moment someone comes, he will jump at the chance to leave, which is fine. That's what happens in football. But how much would we sell him for? What would you accept for Christian Romero? Because if Romero goes, now all of a sudden you're looking at bringing in three centre-halves. Does that then become Tapsoba, Van der Ven, Adarabayo? I don't know. I'm just surmising. I'm not, I'm not suggesting this. I'm just surmising off of the reports. So please don't all go mad. Then that asks the question, doesn't it? We've been linked with Bremer. Does Bremer come back the other way? They're very different types of centre-halves. Romero, very good with the ball at his feet, can bring it out. Bremer, though, is, is a defender. Bremer's a much better defender for me. You know, he's, he's better in the air, he's more physical, he's more of a leader and a warrior. Unfortunately, if you put the two together, you'd probably have a fantastic, world-class centre-back. So, lots of questions surrounding Christian Romero there. I think he'll probably stay, but the reports are out there, and I'm just putting the question to you. Please don't go mad. And the last player I wanted to talk about today was another one that splits this fan base. Many players split this fan base. Pierre-Emerick Hoiberg has been linked heavily in the last 48 hours to Atletico Madrid. Now, some people love Hoiberg. Some people think he's the Viking, the warrior. He's the first name on the team sheet. He beats his chest when, we, when, we, uh, when, when he makes a tackle and when goal line clearances. But other people don't think he's very good at all. Other people think he's slow. He's lethargic. He's not very good with the ball at his feet. And they would let him go in an instant. What I will say is, I, I, I don't mind Hoiberg. For me, I think if a bid came in for 35, 40 million, I'd quite happily see him go. I think with good scouting, you can get much better players in central midfield than Hoiberg. I want to see players come in with a bit more legs. People who can get around the pitch a bit better. People with a little bit more ability in their legs. But what I will say for the guy is he has been very committed to us the last two, three years. He has been there through thick and thin. He gives his all. And I can never doubt that from him. So for me, he wouldn't be the first name on my list to get rid of. But I wouldn't mind him going if it meant better midfielders coming in. I'm not really a fan of the Skips and the Winkses and the Hoybergs. They're all a bit one-dimensional for me. And I think that now Spurs need to get to the point, especially in a Postacoglu formation, where one of those three is an out-and-out -out defensive midfielder to allow the two attacking fullbacks to go. Now, names we've been linked with were people like Fafana and Amrabat. Now, Again, links, reports, rumours, that's what it is at this stage. That's all we are. We're football fans talking about links, reports and rumours. Could it happen? Might it happen? If? If being the biggest word in football. 
Amrabat is somebody that nobody wanted about a year and a half ago when he was linked with us. Now, since then, they've seen him in the World Cup. They've seen him. They've seen him for Fiorentina and everyone wants him. He'd be a perfect addition. He is an out-and-out -out defensive midfielder that sits in front of the back four. Great engine, good legs, can pass, mops up, tackles. He'd be brilliant. But what I do worry is I feel that he'll have much bigger fish to fry than Tottenham Hotspur, rumoured to be going to clubs like Barcelona. So there's my daily thought today for the Spurs snippet. Alex Scott from Bristol City. Eric Dyer wants to stay. Romero to Juve. Hoiberg to Atletico. Amrabat coming the other way. Bremer coming the other way. Let me know your thoughts. Please like, please subscribe. I'll be back in the UK tomorrow. and My first live stream will be on Sunday morning at 10am for a Sunday morning ramp with Sava. But please keep liking, keep subscribing, and let's get to that 10k as quickly as possible. Thanks everyone. And as always, come on you Spurs.